Right then, another Passat CUA video. So if you want to know more about these engines and what we can do with them, watch the previous videos first. But this is going to be the first one in its original form that we're going to start unleashing, so to speak. So as we've said before, it is a complicated engine. There's a lot of stuff going on here, charge cooler, a million sensors on the exhaust, two turbos, very noisy workshop. It's going to keep happening as well. So what we're going to do now, is just for a test, I'll put this down for a black car anymore. We're going, to, uh, we're going to get the DPF out, get it back on the dyno. So at the minute we're at about 460 pounds of torque, 292 horsepower. We want to tip past 300 if we can. So hopefully we can drop the exhaust gas temperatures by taking that out of the exhaust. So we'll let Paul get cracking and we'll see how complicated it is. Tells you it going for a while. And we'll see how complicated everything is when it's all out. We'll have a look at it. Owen, can you just stop for like five minutes? Not even for one minute, not even a minute, 30 seconds. So we'll get the DPF out, see how complicated it looks. And then we'll get a pipe made up, get it back on the dyno and see what that does for the dyno figures. And hopefully we'll get it back on the road for a quick test see what performance that increases and then this bad boy is going to go on but that's the next video So, Paul's had a good couple of hours hacking away at this, maybe a little bit longer, and he's finally got everything ripped out. Owen just keeps, it's that exact same job again. But yeah, it's a lot of stuff to get it out. So, sort of first thing to come out, full subframe, which is pretty standard when you're doing all on modern stuff. Then this dry shaft, which goes all the way through to the other side into the diff, which is a bit odd. Transfer case has to come out, which obviously to get DPS out, usually on four wheel drive stuff that happens. Then this is a bracket which weighs about a kilo for the DPF itself. So we've got the DPF with quite, quite a few, Scott just interrupting there. Um, so we've got a few sensors on here, not as many as some. Add blue going into the top there after the sort of first portion of the DPF, EGT probe. Then there's obviously going to be pressure sensors coming up to here, which is there. And then we've got EGT down here as well. And then we've got a throttle flap here, which that closes and adds back pressure here, which goes through. It's on another part of the thing, and it's kicking about around here anyway. That's the low pressure EGR then as well, which comes from here, which if that shuts, it pushes it through. Absolutely ridiculously complicated, but not as many sensors on this as normal. We can show you on this turbo, but a lot of the sensors 
put on the turbo in, then we've got pressure output sensors. There's, there's just loads going on here, as usual. So tuning this is going to be fun when we change the turbo. At the minute, fine. Once we change the turbo, there's going to be loads of calculations that we're messing up when we add more airflow. So, yeah, Paul's pretty much to where he can be. I think he's going to nail the subframe back up and then Dan's going to get cracked on making a delete pipe and jigging it and what have you. And then hopefully, I'm not in tomorrow, probably Thursday, it's all back together, it's running, road test, and then back on the dyno, quick, or quick on the dyno, road test, then we'll get it back on the ramp, rip it to bits and get the turbo on. So hopefully, by the end of this week, we're running again with a bigger turbo, so we'll see. <laughs> God, I'm on set! DPF delete is on, all made up. I'm not sure how much good footage we got, so whatever happened before I'm talking now on the video, that was as good as it gets. Sometimes difficult to try and get a good video of this stuff happening. Bit of a pain for Paul to do it, as we described earlier, but sorted now, got it on there. This is what we're doing on the dyno. So the orange and the red, there, what it did before, 228 standard, 292 after our tune with the DPF in. And what it's doing now, the pink line, is a bit messed up. So, what this is showing us here now, because we've took the restriction away from the exhaust, boost control's just all over the place, the, the change of a valve's opening too early. Is that my phone ringing again? That's every video last week, innit? It never normally happens. Anyway. The, uh, so the boost control's just all over the place, boost dropping at the top end as well, because the control's just not quite there. So what we need to do is basically tune this to have a DPF delete, which it's a bit annoying. It sometimes happens on some cars that you get rid of the restrictions and then all the modeling that's in the ECU doesn't quite know what's happening and stuff like that. So we'll fix that. Obviously the power's dropped a little bit, but boost control's all over the place. You can see torques a lot more down than the horsepower is. So we're gonna be able to play with that. Hopefully get more. If we don't get more, there's something really gone wrong and I don't quite know what that is. But the good thing as well, we've dropped on a long pull, a really long pull, sort of simulating like a fourth gear pull all the way to the top, fifth gear maybe. We've dropped 40 or 50 degrees on the charge temperatures, uh, exhaust gas temperatures. And if we look at the lander, Oh no, I've got the wrong one. So as you can see, right at the top here where we've lost the power, we're a lot leaner anyway. So that's just, it's not putting as much fuel in or it's getting out there better. I believe we're just breathing better. And obviously where it's dipping, that's because the fueling's not quite there. The boost's not quite there, so the fueling's not doing what it should be doing. So I think we're going to be able to easily tip past the 300 just tuning this and getting it nice and adding a little bit of extra fuel in there. So we'll see how we get on. I were hoping that it, we're just going to put it on, dyno it, it's done the power, straight off road test, but that might be in a bit. So we'll leave Matisse to do what he's doing, get this as good as it can be, and then it's ready for the turbo doing. So we'll see. So it's been a while since 
the last bit of the video film, so I'm sorry if I go over anything again. But basically, if you look here, we have managed to smooth things out a little bit. So all the dips and everything have gone as much as possible. You're still going to get a little bit of something happening on the changeover, but it was no different to what it was like. Standard, really, just maybe exaggerated slightly. So 228 stock, 292 with the tune with all the emission stuff in, 303 with the stuff taken away. So now we're ready to get the turbo in, but I think we never had any grief with the um, DPF, so I don't think the gains justify taking it out completely. It is a decent gain, but like I always say to people, don't take anything out if it's not giving you any hassle. But if you want the big turbo, I'm pretty sure you'd have to do that anyway, or at least it's all out while you're doing it. So we'll get over to the workshop and see what Paul's going to be doing next, basically.